Okay, so let me introduce myself. My name is Enrico Bottazzi. I'm a technical writer for Polygon ID. And today, and today I'm going to introduce you the identity layer for Web3. So let's start by playing a game. This is a really boomerish meme, but I think it makes, uh, it makes its job. So what's your identity currently in Web2 like? So ask you this question. I think the um, most probably your answer is gonna be your email address, it can be maybe your Instagram profile, it can be your Twitter profile, but does it actually represent your identity? Does it actually represent your identity in its uh, entirety? I think the answer is no, because if we go to the root of the internet, we can say that internet was built without an identity layer in it. Uh, well, what does it mean? Like, if you think right now, our identity is scattered across accounts. It's not an identity. We are only accounts, uh, and these accounts are not uh, truly self-owned, are m mostly are owned by other platforms, by centralized platforms. So how digital identity evolved through times? We started with the normal username, password, login. We moved to login with Facebook, login with Twitter, and now we got to connect with MetaMask, connect with your wallet, basically. And I mean, like what we accomplished is really cool. Like now we have uh, data portability, so every time you can connect, you can bring your own assets across platforms, you don't have this uh, burden of passwords, and you have actually ownership of data. So in the wallet, you store your own keys, and basically this gives you the possibility to prove uh, that these data are actually owned by yourself. So which are actually these data, the identity data that we currently have in uh, Web3? Mostly is financial transaction, is uh, token, is assets. But like right now, we can see even like at its CC, everyone was exchanging POAPs uh, using ENS names. So we are kind of trying uh, to express our identity in a, um, let's say, more personalized way. So we are adding uh, things to express our identity on Web3, on our wallet. And this is cool, but like, if we want to achieve systems that rely on better coordination, better access control, of course, this is not enough. I mean, this is just like positive reputation, but uh, of course, there are many other things that make for our identity. It can be our address, like home address. It can be our tastes, our friends. Uh, the places that we like to visit, that we are traveling to. And of course, we don't want to put such data on chain. We don't want to put him publicly visible on chain. What we need, so, we need a self sovereign identity that fully represents yourself while also adding privacy. So we want to retain what we, actually, we, we already achieved with uh, web free wallet and we want to add two things more data basically and the second thing is to add a wall of privacy between our public identity and this data just making a, a quick step back how an identity model looks like there are three actors involved there's an issuer which which is someone that says something about you there's you as an identity holder, and there's a verifier, which is basically every actor that wants to know something about you. And of course, there must be trust between verifier and the issuer. So as a verifier, I need to check information issued but so by someone that I trust. So if it's not clear, maybe this will make it more clear. The COVID certificate example. So. The COVID certificate is um, something that is issued to a government 
And every time that you want to, I don't know, travel or go to a restaurant, at least a few months ago, you had to scan this QR code. There are a few problems in this, uh, in this model. So first of all, every time that this QR code gets scanned, basically the government receives a call and uh, to basically to give access to this information. And this is bad because uh, the government is gonna be able to track all of your, uh, the travel, the places that you visit, the restaurant that you go to. And the second bad thing is that the verifier will be able to access not only the fact that you are vaccinated, but other personal information, such as your name, your country of residence, your um, date of birth, and it's something that is, is not needed. So how this uh, structure can be improved by adding privacy? We can add privacy by making the issuer not being able to track your identity, sorry, not to track your movement, not to track your interaction. We want to make the identity holder to be able to share the minimum possible amount of data to a verifier, and we want the verifier to be able, starting from this uh, small amount of data, to be confident about the validity of the information that gets shared. So now we move to an example that is more closely, it's more close to, to our space, is a proof of concept that we developed and it involves uh, Polygon DAO. Basically, the idea here is to use uh, Polygon ID identity layer to create uh, anti-CBIL, sorry, CBIL resistant mechanism, but based with, uh, on privacy. So the idea is that Polygon DAO is able to verify that a person is actually an individual without giving up any privacy of that individual. So without accessing any personal information, without requiring any uh, authentication, basically. So how this process works? First of all, someone has to initiate, create their identity by downloading Polygon ID app. It's a wallet, basically, but it's not um, uh, uh, like similar to MetaMask wallet. First difference is that uh, it stores a different keeper. So it's not your Ethereum keeper, but it's a, a keeper called BabyJabJab that is more friendly with ZK Snark circuits. Uh, and the second thing, the, the, the most important role of the wallet is that it stores the claim. It stores all of your identity information locally on your wallet. So the issuer, in this case, is Polygon Verify. Um, after an identity submits their, uh, their document, their ID, issues claims to the wallet. These claims are, for example, your date of birth, your country of residence, and your proof of personal, for example. And at the same time, the issuer adds uh, this new claim as a leaf inside of an identity Merkle tree, and the root of this Merkle tree gets published on chain. So here, I think the, the thing that we need to underline is that starting from the state, the root that is stored on chain is impossible to fetch any information about the claims that are stored inside the tree. So now it comes into place verifier, Polygon DAO, Polygon DAO makes a query to identity holder. In this case, the query is, are you part of Polygon DAO? Are you actually an individual part of Polygon DAO? This query um, gets received by the wallet, and the wallet, starting from the claim stored inside the wallet, locally generates a cryptographic proof uh, based on the query asked by, the, by Polygon DAO. So Polygon DAO receives the proof uh, and it has to verify the proof. The verification happens starting from the root that is stored on chain. So Polygon DAO is now confident uh, that the, um, the claim of the, of the identity order is valid, is not revoked, uh, 
and was actually issued by Polygon Verify. So the, the, the cool thing here is that the identity holder never discloses any personal information to the Verify. It's only sharing a cryptographic proof that doesn't say anything more than just the fact that is queried by Polygon DAO. Okay, so now let's see it in practice. Uh, let's see the demo, if it works. Okay. So on the right you see Polygon ID app. Uh, basically, the first step is to create to initiate your um, your own identity on the wallet A as you can see now on the on the right it's empty there are no claims inside of it now the from the wallet you are connected to polygon verify that is going to issue you some claims uh, so right now you are authenticating you will be you you are going to share your um, your id So after the ID is verified by Polygon Verify, this is gonna generate claims uh, that now the wallet is gonna fetch and receive uh, inside their wallet. So we can see we have four claims, uh, proof of personhood, Polygon DAO member, date of birth, and country of residence. Okay, so it, the claims are being added to the wallet and now we see we have four claims. As I said previously, proof of personal is just saying that you are an actual individual. Polygon DAO membership is certifying your membership to the DAO. Date of birth, of course, certifying your date of birth and country of residence, certifying your country of residence. So now it comes the, the cool part actually. So you're gonna use this claim to vote uh, for a Polygon DAO proposal. On the left, you see Grail, which is a platform to vote, to cast your vote. And now, actually, I wanted to pause for a second to um, point you to this thing. So it's not like the traditional connect your wallet experience that like you connect with MetaMask and then the platform is accessing all your uh, on-chain history, all your tokens, all your NFT. Basically, this connect your wallet means just authenticating and uh, sharing your public identifier. Not, no other information is shared with uh, the platform. Then it's going to, to the proposal. As you can see, there is a Polygon DAO proposal, which is actually live. And in order to submit your proposal, to submit your vote, sorry, you have to prove, prove eligibility. On the right, you can see the request. So it's asking you to demonstrate that you are a Polygon DAO member. And if you, if you submit your proof, basically, you, you, you're now locally generating a cryptographic proof uh, that to prove, actually, your eligibility to, to vote for, uh, for this proposal. So the proof is generated. You're now able to cast your vote. Uh, and no personal information, nothing about your claim is exposed to, to, um, to Grail, which is the voting platform. So, okay, just two more things that I didn't mention in the, in the, in the structure that are cool is the claims reusability. So it means that we now use the claims issued by Polygon, by ourselves, basically, to, to, to authenticate into Polygon DAO, but like these claims can be reused across any other platform. So any of you can decide to get their access, the access to their DAO, to their platform, according to the claims that are issued by someone else. And another point is that the attestation is permissionless and can also be peer-to-peer. -peer. So everyone must be able to create their own claim. It also doesn't need to be like corporate uh, subject or business subject, but it can also be myself, 
issuing you claim that you attended this event potentially. So you can think about how rich this, uh, this wallet, how many data points, identity related data points you can add to your wallet. And uh, to finish, I just wanted to mention a few use cases that you can implement using Polygon ID. You can, for example, in DeFi, you can add on-chain private KYC. You can create the centralized credit score. You can, uh, in the realm of web-free social, you can create a portable rep reputation across platforms. You can create uh, anonymous credential-based posting. So for example, you can potentially prove that you are part of a DAO, but publish in an anonymous way. And lastly, in DAO, as we see, you can create CB-resistant voting mechanism, reputation-based voting mechanism, and the most simple one, just private uh, gating access. But the thing is that starting from this uh, infrastructure, as you can see, both the claims and the query are a completely, let's say, broad and open data structure that can be composed one of each other. So if you think about any current application that lives and it's based on uh, identity, using this Polygon ID identity layer, you can, you can basically improve any, any mechanism, any coordination. So last thing, I want to, um, invite you to build on Polygon ID. You can see two QR codes here. On the left, you can find the next hackathons. They're gonna include Polygon ID as bounties. And on the right, you can see the docs uh, that are being built. It's like temporary docs, uh, the initial infrastructure of Polygon ID that you can start using to basically either issue claims uh, or on the other side, get access to your platform based on privacy-based verification. Thank you. Uh, of course, uh, if you have any question, feel free to ask. Is it possible today to um, add a verifier of a specific claim on a smart contract Yes, so right now, if you check the, the current docs, uh, you only see the off-chain verification, so let's say Web2 based uh, authentication, but it's, I think, a matter of weeks uh, when we are gonna release the on-chain verification. So yeah, you can just set up a query, and inside the smart contract, you will either get true or false as a, as a result of the verification. Okay, thank you, Erica. Thank you. Thanks for sharing.